In this video, we're going to go through a few interesting ways that you can utilize disconnected tables in Power BI. I want to explain to you what it is. And we're also going to go through a few demo looking at the different ways that you can use it for yourself. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So disconnected tables in Power BI is a technique where you create a table that is not related to your main data model. And its main purpose is so that your users are able to make selections to this table without affecting the filters, using relationships with your main model, but you can control it sort of more dynamically and with more precision using measures. And there are many tricks that you can use with sort of disconnected tables. So today we're going to go through the three most obvious ways that you can use disconnected tables to make your user experience a lot more interesting. So the first and most obvious way that you can use disconnected tables is through kind of page navigation. So here in this report, for example, um, we have a few pages that we've set up. We have the summary page, review page and history. All of them have sort of different visuals. And normally, if you have this published into a Power BI service, you would just flick through these pages here. But you might have a design decision where you don't want the navigation to be here on these tabs, but you want it to be in the page itself. And um, using disconnected tables is a good way for you to kind of control that page navigation, obviously apart from the page navigator. So what we'll do is we'll create a new table here and uh, we'll name this pages. And we'll name this first column pages as well. And uh, we'll name and and put the name of the pages that we want uh, to be able to move in in between into here into these rows. And you have to make sure that the names of the pages matches what are in these rows, because that's how uh, Power BI will determine which page to go to. We're going to leave it like that. Summary reviews history, which is uh, matching the pages that we have. If you hit load, another thing that you want to make sure um, it doesn't uh, happen very often is that uh, Power BI doesn't uh, create relationship automatically with this new table that you've just created. So you can do that. You can check that by going through a, a here looking at the relationships, just make sure that it's disconnected from your data model. If you have a lot of tables in your data models, you can also click manage relationships, which shows you um, all the relationships that you have within your model. Just make sure that the disconnected table is not here. The next step from here is to simply create a measure that returns what is selected within this uh, disconnected table. So the first thing, maybe let's make it easier. Let's just put this into a slicer first. Let's make it into a drop down. And let's make the selection type a single select because we want this to always only be giving one page because the navigation, you can only go to one page, for example. And then let's insert a button here. I'm just going to add right arrow here just to keep it simple. And this is the button that we'll use to trigger to which page we want to go to. So now let's uh, actually hook up where this goes to this button goes to when we select it based on what we have selected in our drop down. So I'm going to do is I'm going to go to create new measure, we're going to change, we're going to create page selected here. And I believe we can just get um, max review Sorry, pages, pages. So if I just put this into a card here, you will see what it does. So it simply returns what page we have selected here in our drop down. And you'll see obviously, as you make changes, it doesn't affect anything else in your page, which is exactly what we want. So now, what we'll do is within this button itself, we'll toggle action. And if you expand that, you want to go to page navigation and in the destination, instead of selecting which page to go to here, you click the FX icon. This will allow you to define where it goes to based on your own calculation, which in this case is the measure that we've just created. So if you hit OK, that should be it. So now if you change this to, let's say, history, 
and you select the button, it will take you to the history page, just like that. The next way that you can use disconnected tables is to create some sort of custom sorting for your tables. Now, um, this one is a little bit more complex. Well, I, I guess it's not really that complex. Um, we'll break it down so that you understand uh, what the point of this is. So first, let's look at this review page, which is um, just giving us a list of the reviews for uh, the Apple's iPhone. It's just the data set with about 5,000 reviews. And we have a lot of different information like, uh, you know, what the review had its five star rating, uh, when was it reviewed, how many comments were there, you know, how helpful did users found it. And we have it here currently in our page as a table. And um, normally, if you would want to sort this table, let's say by uh, the earliest, you would simply go and sort it by selecting the columns. So you'll see this is the, uh, the earliest review. And then if you click it again, it will show you what the, the latest review is. If you wanted to get the one that's most discussed uh, with total comments here, you just sort it descending like this and then etc. etc. Now, this is um, cool and, and you know, you don't really need to implement anything if you're using this feature because it's already built into the table visual in Power BI reports. But what would make this experience much easier or much more convenient uh, for users is if they have the ability to just simply select to see, you know, what is most discussed or what is the most recent what which is quite common let's say if you've ever browsed for reviews in amazon this is how it's built so you can use disconnected tables in power bi to do the same thing so what we'll do is we'll follow the same steps that we did for the pages here so we'll first create the disconnected table um, we'll name it sorting and uh, let's work with a few examples here so we want the selection to have most recent most discussed and what else uh, most most helpful so let's see so this will be most recent most discussed and then most helpful so we'll just leave it like that we'll hit load um, and then in this one as well we're going to create a new measure the same way that we we did the other page um, and then we will design or decide what is being sorted based on the selection so we'll use this selected value and then uh, we will say sorting column one. And if I put this into a card, so nothing is selected at the moment because we don't have it in the page. But if we now drag in our column one, put it here as a slicer and make it as a drop down. And again, for this one, we want to have single select because we want them to be able to select um, just one at a time. There we go. But obviously it's not linked yet to our table. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to create a single table that changes its values based on what is selected in our disconnected table. And then we will make use of this descending feature in the table so that the sorting changes based on descending but the value of the column decides what that descending means okay that sounds a little bit confusing so let me just show you so i'm going to create a new measure actually no we'll just reuse the same measure here um, i'll wrap this selection we have here with a variable and then we'll just say selected like this And then we will create a switch statement, which is um, an easier way um, to write um, if else nested statements. So we'll type true here in the expression and we'll say if selected is equals to um, most, most recent, I think that's the first one, then we want to show what is the most uh, or, or, or what is the, the reviewed date here. So review date reviewed at, I think that's what it's called. Um, the max is just to uh, to summarize, to, to create um, and, and, and get what is in that row, since it will have a row context when we, when we put it in the table. It will be just basically whatever the review date is. And then the next statement is if the selected is uh, most discussed, we want to all now this one, we want to do a sum. Uh, which is, uh, I believe this one is just comments, right? Like this. 
and then if um, if it's the other one that is selected is the helpful then we will do some of the helpful counts like this so if you now hit enter if we drag this now into our table and sort it by descending at the moment you can see that the values here 48 So now if you look at the um, the new column that we've just added, this is a measure and I just had to update the, the calculation just to use max because we don't really want to sum it up. We just want to get whatever the value is on those rows. You will see that um, as I make different selections, for example, most helpful is what's selected here that matches the value in our helpful count. Um, but if I select uh, most discussed, it will show you uh, reviews with the highest comments and most recent obviously it just sorts this by descending based on the review that date so this way you don't really need to rely on these individual columns to sort your your table you just need to rely to this in this uh, one column which changes its values dynamically based on the value selected in the disconnected table so the next trick is a way to filter your tables using certain keywords or key phrases, but you might not have uh, sort of individual columns for them. So for example, uh, I'm just going to remove this one. Well, actually, no, I'll just duplicate it so that we can have a different page for this one. Uh, and I'm going to add, I'm going to remove this sorting as well, and we'll add the review text here. So as you can see here, we have a free text review. For, you know, for that review, we have the title as well. And you might, let's say as a user, want to know what did people say? Um, I want to see comments or reviews that mention battery life or display, just so that I can have an idea of, you know, sort of how do people perceive these different features. And, um, you know, we can add a drop down filter for that. But the thing is, because this is a free text, we kind of just want to search that keyword within these texts. And uh, a way to do that is by using uh, disconnected tables. So again, let's follow the same process. Let's create first the disconnected table. I'm going to name this one uh, keywords. And then we're going to say battery life. And let's add a few more. So I think display and um, price. Words, um, and I'm going to load it. And then we're going to now create that measure for that sorting. So we'll name this one uh, keyword search. And uh, we're going to start and uh, we're going to go straight away by creating the variable because this is going to be the next step. And uh, we're going to use this selected uh, value from our keywords table return and and another thing that i do uh for this one for example because i want to search for keywords for both the title and the text i would um, create a combination of them here so i will do a title max review and then just add a space in between and then body you don't really need to do this um i just like to search for the keyword on both the title and the body um, just to be extra thorough so here what we're going to do is if we're gonna we're gonna create an if statement uh, and we're gonna say if contains string uh, within texts is we're gonna create a lower body text for the body so we convert everything in uh, uh, the text in this variable to lowercase just so that the contain string uh, will honor the case sensitivity if there is one. And then we'll also lower, create a lower for the selected value because we have some uh, capitalizations there. And then we will close this contain string and then we'll just say, give me one. And if it's uh, nothing, then it's it will be no. So there we go. So it will just return us one if it matches with whatever we've selected. So uh, now if you drag that into your table, it will show us one on everything. And um, if we now add this into a slicer, you select uh, battery life, it will show you, as you can see, it will just give you those um, those reviews with the battery life. So display here, you'll see it, ha it will find those, those uh, keywords for you.
And that's really it for those three different ways that you can use disconnected tables, at least the ones that I wanted to demo in this video. If you wanted to see all of these in full action, I created a report which analyzes this exact same data set. And here is the sort of final result. So as you can see, you're able to choose by most helpful or most recent, and it will kind of sort that manually your table and we also have this read reviews that mention which is the, the the last one that i showed you so you can select let's say camera so it will show you reviews that have those uh, keywords or key phrases and these features use disconnected tables for it to to work like this and if you're also interested in another different way to use disconnected tables, I created a video in the past, which allows you to sort of custom highlight tables or reports or charts within your reports using disconnected tables. So you're able to select from a drop down of things and that will not filter charts, but instead highlight them instead. So if you're interested in knowing how to use that or how to make it happen, I'll leave a link somewhere in this video for it. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.